Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Vegas Talks right here in downtown Las Vegas at the Inspire Theater. We'd like to thank everyone for joining us. We got an amazing show coming your way, so be sure you stick around. Wow, wow, good job. Man, this crowd, I can tell you guys are excited for our chief bacon brunch and booze correspondent, Bonnie Gore, come on out. Bonnie. Oh my gosh, so much news. Hi. Bacon, this booze, brunch. Yeah. Everywhere in town is having amazing brunches. Uh, I love brunching. I love day drinking. I love champagne. I love, Ooh. right? They, Bloody they, Marys. I mean, if you have a full day ahead of you with nothing else to do, why not blow it on fried food and booze? No, they, they say this is, <laughs> right, right. They, they've been calling this a Trump-like midday brunch booze movement. Yeah, it's true. It's taking the nation by storm. Okay, so we sent you out to the House of Blues. What did you find out during your drunken brunch and booze in afternoon? Well, I was not alone. I had a few other uh, cast members with me. And <laughs> we, barely, we barely got them here for that Monday meeting. I yeah. know. They're still hungover. <laughs> um, no, House of Blues is great. They have a bi-weekly Saturday brunch called No Regrets Brunch that includes a bunch of small plates, really affordable. They have great deals on bottomless mimosas, um, Bloody Marys, and screwdrivers. So you're guaranteed to get messed up. And a live band, so they get the whole place jumping, dancing, and uh, having fun. And on top of it all, anybody who likes beer pong, they have mimosa pong. So it's some competition. Yeah, and when, gotta, yeah. you know, when you're drinking, you start some fun conversations. After I got to talk to the chef about one of their signature dishes, uh, we had a little roundtable discussion about the band, work, and relationships. Great. So, That's brunching with Vaughn for you. So uh, you got a clip for us, right? Yep. It's right here. Take a look. Welcome to House of Blues, Las Vegas, here inside Mandalay Bay. Brunching with Vaughn is going to be brought to you by No Regrets Bottomless Mimosa Brunch. Let's see what they're cooking in the kitchen. I'm here with executive chef Charles Miller at House of Blues Las Vegas inside Mandalay Bay to talk about No Regrets Brunch and one of his favorite dishes to cook up on Saturday mornings. It's a perfect little mini version. It is. I love the size of it. And we have a piece of bacon. Everything's better with bacon. Everybody knows that. Of course it is. And then uh, we make a blazing skulls butter. We have a hot sauce here. Blazing skulls hot sauce. Butter, the hot sauce, a little bit of lime juice and cilantro. And then our fried chicken like before. And I like to skewer it. And of course, it's not brunch without alcohol, so bourbon maple syrup. We got some whiskey involved here. Yes, we do. <laughs> and that is it. Bacon and butter, y'all. Not only do they have delicious bottomless mimosas, bite-sized food, and a great atmosphere with live music here at House of Blues, Gretchen and Vaughn is going to partake in Mimosa Pong! Mimosa Pong! <laughs> I like to invite in mimosas so much, Andy Donahue is going to be repping this round. That's correct, Vaughn. This is the official Brunch with Vaughn Pong Invitational. Athletes from around the brunch table have assembled for this athletic event. Well, I thank you for taking on the huge responsibility mm -hmm. of refereeing this event, mm -hmm. and I assume you will be fair. I want a spirited competition with fair officiating. <laughs> fingering moment that's the one that the it's all in finger, the wrist it's all in the it's wrist all in the wrist that's amazing all right well bonnie when's the next brunching with bond where people can check this out you can find me at 
Brunchin' with Bon on Instagram. Follow me there and you'll find out where the next deal is. House of Blues gave anybody who mentioned Brunchin' with Bon or Vegas Talk Show a great deal, something that was exclusive that nobody else got. So follow me on Instagram and you'll know where the next hot deal is. All right, we'll check it out. Thank you so much for coming out. It's great having you on. Good Brunchin'. Thanks for having You're me. Doing solid work out yep. there. There we go. Ah, I feel it. I feel it. Hit my soul right there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming out, everybody. I really appreciate it. So uh, our first guest, he's a private teacher, an amazing artist that did over a thousand plus paintings. Please give it up for Justin Leopard. Hey, man. Thanks Good. for coming out, Good. man. Appreciate Thank it. You. Sit down. Relax. Yeah. I want to see if, because you was working on your painting earlier. Can you right. finish it on stage? Yeah, I would love to. Yeah? Yeah. So you think you can do an interview and... Easily. You got skills Easily. like that? Yep. You got skills like that? All right. All right, let's make some noise for him. All right. Yeah. All right, let's make it happen. So you are a painter. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, I, now I would consider myself more of an artist. Right. Because I do a little bit of everything. Sculpture, installation art has been my focus. Right. Over the last, say, two years. Yeah. So what got, what got you into painting? You know, um, I went to school to be an engineer, and I had four years of that, but I really got bored. I didn't have anything in common with any of those people at all. Right. So I went and got into politics. Oh, man. And <laughs> I know it sounds bad. Oh, man. Real bad. I worked for the president, and he was an idiot. <laughs> And I could not vote for him, but he yeah. invited me to the inaugural dinner, and I ate some really good food, hey, and man. that was about it. Heard so. the guy go fish. Yep. Yeah. So, but like, that's inspired me to keep uh, doing art. So right. about 20 years deep, I am doing this. Right on. That's amazing. So describe your painting style. So in most situations, I am 100% an abstract painter. I go in with no actual idea of what I'm going to paint. I right. just kind of let like the music and the feeling kind of dictate where the color and the, the flow comes from. Right. Oh, man. You really got skills. Like, you know, so you also teach a class. In a couple times a week, yeah. I teach uh, privately for uh, students to get into LVA and then a couple LVA students. Mm -hmm. And then I do uh, like the old ladies and drinking, right? which always gets a little <laughs> weird. You get, a know. Little, get a little touchy? Yeah, you yeah. know, um, they say they're Christian women, but then they... <laughs> they yeah. Come, come here, baby. Let me... Uh, you're so strong. You know, they, they tend to slide their hands yeah, down yeah. the back of my mm. pants while I'm trying to help them. <laughs> and right, 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 right. And I'm like, what kind of Christian women are you, <laughs> you know? And I was like, oh, you're the good ones, <laughs> right? Right, oh, uh, yeah. So uh, how did you get you? what made you get into painting, like, your, you know, your start of it? I know you, I know you said earlier, like, your family kind of helped you. So uh, I come from a very artistic family right. back in the Midwest. Indiana? Yes. So, Shout outs uh, to Indiana. Yeah. You know, make some noise, you know? All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, grandma was deep in it. Right. And uh, pretty much she was like, I will get you back. And then as I graduated college and found out that politics was not for me, right. I uh, kept drawing. I did some really tight, like, engineering drawings right. for a couple years. And then a uh, significant lady friend was like, why don't you paint your drawings, Justin? And then I started painting my drawings, and then they started to sell. And I was just like, yeah. this is where it's at. Yeah. So is it true, like I said, is it true that you really did over 500 last year? So in class, what I like to do is I'll actually um, teach more than one painting at a time. Right. And so over 200 classes last year, I actually can, you know, kind of vouch and say I've done four or 500 paintings easily between right. class and then my own private work. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Like, <laughs> all kinds the, of... Just, yeah, like... <laughs> I mean, the, the fact, like, the creativity is, like, ridiculous, you know. Y your style is very, you know, I see where you're going with it. Oh, also, you was tell you were saying that uh, body paintings. I mean, talk to me you about know, that one. So body painting was the first thing that I did while I yeah? um, came out. Guys or girls? 
Well, I mean, 99% of them have been women, but I've had to paint a couple of dudes. <laughs> and I use, like, this long arm, like, <laughs> kind of blind man stroke. Right. But mm -hmm. it's a little different, you know, and they're, they're dancing. And I'm like, why are you dancing? I'm trying to paint your package. <laughs> and they're just like, mm. Like, I'm straight. I'm totally straight. Uh, and I'm like, all right. Cool. Did they have a whistle? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, oh, also, you were saying that uh, – you're the head of the art for First Friday Foundation here yes. in town? Yes. So, um, and I sit on the 18B board, and hey. I, I believe that we need more leaders inside our actual arts right. uh, here in town. Right. And so I take it um, pretty seriously to try and get more art throughout the whole community. Yeah. Because I really think that art um, helps a lot of people. Yeah. And so, and it's kind of my language is painting pictures. Right. You know, so um, this is my way of communicating. So, and I, I really get to teach people from all over the world, which right. has been just totally awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, truly amazing. So how do you see art um, going to be in the future? So we continue to grow. I mean, I have got a new shop. Mm -hmm. um, and our new shop now has CNC machines. We have welders. Okay. Um, we're looking at a full production base for the first time. And so we're at, in the industrial section. Is the shop open now? Um, yeah. And so for the first time, I feel like all the pieces um, are kind of in one place. So we can pretty much manufacture anything right there in-house. Yeah. And so I'm pretty excited about seeing where we can kind of mend yeah. and bring technology and, you know, kind of the old world arts together to make pretty much people the art as we move forward. Yeah. What is like your perspective on uh, how, because now social media is a very big thing. So in my opinion, because I'm more of what they would refer to as an outsider or like an entrepreneur, it's like I own my own gallery, I sell my own art. And so social media has been totally awesome to cut out the middleman. It's direct access to anybody who might want your art from all over the world. And so it's been nothing but a blessing to us over the last, like, say, five years. All right, you guys want to see this? It didn't change much, but. All right, one more second. I'll stand up here all night if you want and tell you about Christian women. There's some funny things that have happened to me. Yep, you guys are welcome. Awesome group. Very excited. All right, so our next guests are the creators of a short slasher film with a comedic flair. So please put your hands together for the team behind Murder for Dummies, Wicked Trinity Productions. Come on out. Hey, welcome. Hi. Thank you. Yeah. Got the whole crew. Have a seat. <laughs> Man, you really know how to wind them up, huh? Guess so. You guys are going nuts. <laughs> Okay, so I am super excited to hear about this movie. Just give everybody the premise. What kind of a movie are you filming? What's it going to be about? The premise is a high school janitor, Bob Miller, gets fed up with his life. He lives in his mom's basement. He is a loser. Um, everyone that goes to school with him that he works at makes fun of him all the time. He's the brunt of all their jokes. And he gets fed up and decides that his higher purpose is to become a famous serial killer. And so it's his first time serial killing. And it follows the story of what happens next. Ooh, all right. And none of you have murdered anyone to be in the open. Not successfully. Not successfully, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, what I thought would be fascinating, I mean, the, the show appeals to entrepreneurs. I think the fascinating thing is what, like, how much you can do with a small budget, right? So let's start by talking about a horror film like this. What, what would it cost in a normal... It would be year? considered an indie, so probably a million-dollar budget, maybe a little bit more or less, depending on special effects and who stars in it. Um, these are all, as of yet, unknown talents, so they'd probably not be paid as much as they're worth and I want to pay them so hard because they're so amazing. And um, basically, there would 
be structure. Um, I'm technically the director, but these two helped me direct all the all of the time. We were cohesive co-directors, and I let the actors nah. own their characters and develop their characters and say, like, I would really like to do this. And I was like, yes, do that. It's hilarious. Yeah. Or, or it's scary as, as hell, so do that. And it, um, it just turned out, it was a group effort. So everyone yeah. was allowed to do what they wanted to do. Yeah, and, and, that, awesome. and that sense of freedom, that's one yeah. continuity, is something I want to talk about in a minute. But first, like, can we just define what guerrilla filmmaking is? Like, what, when you say you're out doing a guerrilla film, what are you doing? Well, basically, when you don't really have a budget to work on to get the locations that you would want, you kind of just have to go out and grab it. So it's about getting into the location, filming before anyone knows you're there, and getting out of there as quickly as humanly possible. <laughs> so you're like, you're like jumping fences, picking locks. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes it's where you know you're not even allowed to go, so uh, you kind of just have to get out of. I feel it. like there should be a movie about how you film this movie. I think it's like a meta thing. Maybe that's next project. Right? We were talking about be, that yeah, earlier. <laughs> okay, so so getting a lot of people to work for free isn't easy. How did the movie get underway? Well, the interesting thing was that when we started writing this, this was supposed to be a trailer. Uh, we huh. had no, we had no like intentions to make it what it is it was supposed to be like a little six minute trailer just to sh just to own our skills and because of all the passion and love that went into it it turned into this 45 minute short film that we're so proud of uh, today oh that's so but, cool you know it, it's um it's the love and the passion we, we're just actors so us getting our feet wet and um promoting it and producing it and writing it and then we have the you know we have our amazing people helping us we have uh, our fellow actors uh, we have our amazing director of photography who, who's not here right now, but we owe it so much to the man. And then we have like amazing people like our, our scorer who were so happy that he was on board to help us. So, you know, it's, um, unfortunately we can't pay them right now. Will we pay them if we have the money? Hell yeah. Yeah. Of course. She said yeah, she's going to pay them hard. Working for I heard that. Free, that is not what we're about at yeah. all. Well, it's a lot no. of, it's a lot of work. I'm glad, you know, yeah. I mean, not, it's hard to watch TV and realize how many hours go into every minute that you watch, <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's really incredible. Um, so I want to touch on this spontaneous kind of attitude you guys took. So it wasn't like, from what I'm saying, it's not totally scripted and not everything is kind of planned out ahead of time. So what is planned out and what isn't? Oh my gosh. Well, the, it was a full script from beginning to end and we, sort of said from the get-go to everyone who came on board, like, if you have an idea about something in the scene, go ahead. I, I told a, a lot of the scenes um, I wanted to be sort of an improv feel because I feel like it adds to the this natural dialogue that happens. That there's a difference between the way people typically talk, where yeah. people are talking over each other, like you just did, a little bit. And <laughs> not in a bad way, just... <laughs> It was, it was a compliment. It's like, yeah, you're complimenting it's the conversation. It's just like we're in the moment. Everything right, exactly. comes out as it comes out. Exactly, you know, but instead like, of like know. line, line, reaction, line, it's this natural flow. And when you let people, <laughs> <laughs> when you give people the freedom to say, okay, this is what's in the script, but please, if you have a different idea in the moment, please take it and, and do that. And it turned out so amazing. There was things that happened that I could never, ever have foreseen happening that were brilliant moments. Yeah, I'm okay, excited. So I, I hate to put you guys on the spot. Not. Do you guys <laughs> want to hear some fun stories? Maybe we could ask each of them to share one of the fun stories that happened while they were jumping fences, breaking into places. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> All right, that'd be good. Kind of throwing you on the spot, but I'd like to hear a story from each person. Um, okay, so... Uh, one of the funniest moments that I had just, I, I felt so, I think it was the second day we, f we filmed. Was that me and Kylie? So. Okay. Second day of filming. And it was like our biggest day from like morning until three in the morning. And okay. so it was like a hectic, crazy day. And I was just used to like directing and that's it. But I had to be on screen that day. So I was really freaked out. And I had been sick. So I was getting over a cold. So my voice was all scratchy, and I'd been blowing my nose <laughs> for two weeks straight. 
So there was that, and then I had, um, I got eyelash extensions for the first time ever, and if any, anyone doesn't know what that is, it's like they literally glue. Those are fake on fake. now? Yeah, these oh. are not real, but they're not like the strip lashes where you glue it on, you go to a lady and she glues on individual ah. hairs to your lashes that last for like three weeks. Because you just want a super ability to keep leaves yeah. out of your eyes? <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> right. For My character is yeah, yeah. like the princess, the, your archetypal mean girl. So yeah. I wanted to look like, you know, I yeah, strong eyes. do that. Keep I don't know. <laughs> like, take care of myself. Keep debris out. Yeah, keep the debris yeah. out. Keep, the, keep yeah. everyone out, the whole world. <laughs> so I had done that for the first time, and the glue um, was bothering me. My eyes kept watering oh. for allergies, and then the glue would, like, sort of, like, come out oh. a little bit, and then <laughs> my eyes would keep watering. So that happened all night, the night before, and I was like, whatever, I'm just going to wake up in the morning and it'll probably be fine. It was not fine. <laughs> my eyes were continuously watering, but we had to shoot, and I was just like, okay, well, this is just what's happening. So we shot one scene, and luckily the first scene I, I had to shoot, I was wearing sunglasses, so it was kind of okay. And then the next scene when we got to the house that we were shooting at, I was yeah. trying to put on like all of my makeup because it was like my full face was going to be on screen. My eyes would not stop watering. Oh, and, then, and, the, and internally I'm freaking out going, oh my God, this, is not, this has to stop. Like I'm freaking out. And then all of a sudden my nose started bleeding. Oh, <laughs> because, oh. Because of, all the, like, uh, because of all the nose blowing. Oh, Because <laughs> I had been sick. Oh. So my co-star comes into the bathroom. My eyes are like, I look like I'm in tears. And I have tissue shoved up my nose <laughs> like, and uh, in my mouth. And I'm like trying to do my Kelly, makeup. we get a rewrite. You're going to have to be murdered now just because of all the blood. <laughs> and she just looks at me. And I just started cracking up laughing because I realized how ridiculous the whole situation was. And she started starts laughing because she laughs at everything. Yeah. Me and her just connected right off the bat and it was just this like really funny awesome. moment of like, I can't believe how disastrous this is already and like we're in day one. Sounds like such a fun time out there. So it was great. But Sarah, okay, you guys you must have some <laughs> stories too, right? Can you top that? Uh, let's try. Uh, this is this was uh, one of the final days of shooting. We were super excited. We had everything already filmed, and th these were the super intense scenes of any horror film. It gets pretty intense towards the end. And at the same time, it's like 2, 3 in the morning, and our director of photography, he has been up since 4 in the morning of the previous day, so he hasn't slept. Uh. He's extremely exhausted, and we're all pretty tired, too. And... It, our our main actor, his scene is supposed to be super serious and super intense. And uh, one of his first lines is, first they ignore you. So then I'm like, okay, Michael, say it's super intense, super angry. This is, I go big or go home. And he's like, okay, got it. So then I'm like, okay then. All right, and action. And then he starts sharpening his knives, being all uh, creepy. And he goes, first I was afraid. And then I'm like, okay, he forgot his line. Don't panic, don't panic. You'll pull it back, you'll pull it back. And then he goes, then I was petrified. And, <laughs> and at that moment, like, Kelly's losing it. Our director of photography, it. everyone just starts cracking up. And he just starts sitting and will survive. And, and dancing. And dancing with, like, with the knife and everything. And we're all like, it's because we were tired, but it was hilarious. And... He has been saving that, and it was worth it. Oh, that's uh, it, awesome. It's, it was super funny because uh, our director of photography, he was so tired, and he couldn't stop laughing. He had to leave the room. <laughs> he had to leave set. We had to take over. It was, it was just pretty cool. That's awesome. All right, give it up. Good job. All right. It's tough acts to follow, but what do you got? So we were doing um, a scene in a backyard with a really big pool. Um, and one of the one, it was me, Brian, and one of our other actors, and he's supposed to be a like a up and coming golfer. So we have him in the backyard with the golf club, and in the script it calls for him to let go of the golf club, um, but he was having a hard time doing it until Kelly basically just yells at him and says, "Just let it go." <laughs> so he swings. And he <laughs> he swings the golf club towards the camera oh, no. and lets it go, and it flies through the air. Right. 
about to hit her. It almost impales her. I swear it was like a Matrix type moment. And we're just staring at there, just like in awe, like, oh my God, is she okay? And out of nowhere, just. Oh, it seems like hours pass, and it's like Kelly just goes, "No, you don't break character. You yeah. keep going." <laughs> I was so mad. I was like, "Keep going!" But we were all so genuinely concerned for her safety because I'm looking towards the direction of the camera, and I just see the golf club, and her just go. <laughs> that is awesome. All right, well, that, that was a really good series. We're a little bit over time, but I got to ask you before you go, where, when can people watch it? Where can they watch it when it's ready? Um, well, it's, yeah. uh, it's going to be finished. We're in the post-production <laughs> phase. Funny. It's going to be finished by the end of February 2017, and then we're going to send it to film festivals, and we're going get, gonna to get it distributed. Um, but you could stay updated on the exact dates of when, it's, when and where it's going to be shown on our Facebook page, which is Murder for Dummies. Okay, so thank you guys for coming, and you brought one of the trailers. Really excited to see it. Let's check trailer. it out. 911, okay. what's the nature of your emergency? First, they ignore you. Then, they laugh. I used to seek the stars on my loneliest of nights Then I found that your smile is the only sort of light that I want To illuminate the dark and keep the vibrancy of dawn Pulsing through my heart, my world still spins To the beat of what you say and comes to a grinding heart When you turn and walk away on my loneliest of days My heart too will skip a beat But the only stars I'll seek are the freckles on your cheeks You know that this space is pulling me in Yeah, you know that this space is pulling me in We're now, now, yeah, yeah, you know We're now, now, yeah, yeah, you know I used to seek the moon on my loneliest of nights And I see that your eyes are the only sort of light that I need To brighten my sky because the universe is perfect When it's right in your eyes when you're gone Energy's at stake, the world is standing still with no memories to make So the moon's behind your pupils is where I'll begin To find galaxies hidden on your porcelain skin You know that this space is pulling me in Yeah, you know that this space is pulling me in
Well now, now, yeah, yeah, you know 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 When there's no reason for my hands to shake I feel the earth slam on its brakes There'll be no sun for me to chase And I'll be still again But when my hands begin to shake I feel the earth ease off its brakes Till I lean in and kiss your face And my world will spin again Yes, once again, we want to thank everyone for coming out and hanging out with us here at Vegas Talks. Once again, give it up for all of our guests. They've been amazing. Take it easy. See you next week.